Hello, Casper. No. Uh, we could have the feeling that you feel you felt a little bit nervous in the beginning of the game. Is that true? Or? Yeah, it was not the best start, unfortunately. Um, obviously, I was broken early. I had a few chances to break back. I didn't get it, so was always kind of playing defensively, coming on the back foot, coming from behind, and um, yeah, I didn't really get the game going, unfortunately. And uh, Steph played well. You know, he plays aggressive. Fantastic with the forehand and playing also really well with the backhand today, I think. So, uh, didn't really find any holes in his game. And um, yeah, I didn't play good enough, as simple as that. And um, I think uh, there were a few, maybe small chances in the second where I had again some break chances, break points. But when you don't convert, it's uh, it's, it's tough to win, to win, the, uh, win, the, win the matches. <clears throat> Uh, well done anyway, great Thank tournament. Uh, beat Djokovic is not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, well, you had uh, actually five break points in three different games in the second set. Yeah. Do you regret particularly one of them? I mean, do you think you had a, ch a better chance uh, in one of those? I mean, in the in actually, in one game you had three break points. Yeah, I, the only one I remember that which I will kind of think about and regret is one time I had a forehand and I went big for it inside in um, and it went long. And, you know, I think that was a problem all, all day. Um, when I played Steph in the past, uh, I think the, the guy who is able to play most aggressive and best with the forehand typically wins the match. Um, I think we both prefer our forehand sides over the backhand. Um, and uh, but today he played also, like I said, heavy, good from his backhand side. So it wasn't like I found any big holes, and I was a little uh, tentative sometimes with the forehand in the beginning. So I missed a few in the net, and then I was just thinking, okay, just play loose, go for it, at least go for the winner. And then when I when I did, I felt like it was going too much out. So I didn't really find a good balance today, and. Uh, I had one break point there uh, where I went first one inside out and then I had the forehand to go inside in and I missed it long. So, of course, it's annoying and uh, I wish I could have that shot back. Maybe I would have done something else, but uh, at least I can say that I kind of went for it, but it didn't go in, unfortunately. Stefanos makes a lot of uh, serve and volley on the second mode. Do you think it was a key point of, uh, of this match? or? Yeah, it was. He didn't do it so much in the first set, and then in the second he changed up a bit. Uh, and yeah, I didn't return well enough today. Um, I had a few break points here and there, like we've talked about. So I was able to get to break point, but just couldn't really punch through and get the break. Sometimes because he, he, he served well, sometimes because he did the serve and volley. So uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's a part of the game. Um, it's part of when you're standing so far behind as I'm doing. It's uh, I'm vulnerable for this this, this play. Uh, yes, he seen uh, tried to play some uh, drop shots sometimes when Tsitsipas was staying a little bit mm -hmm. farther back. You mm, is not your kind of game. You don't like to do it ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a reason? Uh, or you don't feel confident about it? Yeah, I don't. I don't consider it my my best shot. Um, I consider my forehand better than my drop shots, and uh, it's just something that I can be um, critical of my own in in my own game or of like, something I can be critical of in my own game because I don't maybe do it enough. I think. Like you said, Yannick has developed it as a very good shot. Carlos does it perfectly almost every time. Novak also, he plays the drop shot fantastic. So it's some, it's a shot to, to, to have in your repertoire and I don't have it so so good at the moment, but something maybe I should consider to work on. Um, Steph does it also quite well and uh, yeah, it's... Uh, but I just feel like if I have an easy forehand it's, uh, and I play with 100% power and top spin, I will maybe win seven or eight out of ten shots and if i hit the drop shot maybe i will win four or five so statistically i don't always see the point but if i can develop it to become a better shot maybe i will try to to do that was it maybe difficult to handle emotion uh, after a, such a win against novak or not really uh, but uh, you know it's um was obviously a tough match with novak yesterday and today Honestly, it was the first match that I played kind of during the day in uh, this uh, hot condition. So honestly, it was a bit bit different because uh, when the sun goes down, you're playing in the evening. It's uh, not as fast and bouncy as it was today. So it was a little bit to, to adjust to the, the condition and the speed of the court. Um, 
but emotionally I was ready. I, I woke up today and thought, you know, today is the day I'm going to try to win a big, big title and um, just wasn't able to perform when I came on court. Hi, Casper. Congratulations. Um, how close do you feel from that uh, big title you're chasing? And uh, is it in terms of, of the level? Yeah. And um, is it difficult to, you know, f forget the negativity like uh, four times, five times, six times? If, you know, I've, I, today it didn't feel so close because I lost straight sets to Steph, uh, but he also played very well. Um, I told him on the court, I mean, he's uh, maybe had a few struggles um, in the last six, seven months. I think it's uh, uh, we can be open and say that. Um, he fell out of the top ten a few weeks ago for the first time in a really long time. So uh, now he will back, be back in it. I think that's where he, he belongs. His level is uh, really good when he plays like this. And uh, it's nice to see him back in the top ten. Mm. But um, yeah, in, in, for my sake, I think I've taken a few steps this week, but today it just didn't work out well. Uh, obviously, saying that I took a few steps, I I think I played well on the clay, and also obviously in the yesterday beating Novak was a fantastic win for me and something that I hope I can kind of take confidence from. Maybe not today, but maybe next time I play a big match or next time, hopefully, if I'm in a big final again, I will think about, you know, you know, I've maybe the fact that I've beaten Novak before can be something that can give me confidence. Uh, you have uh, been very close to become number one in the world. Yeah. And uh, you were number two. Uh, and uh, uh, do you think, uh, what, what were you missing or what uh, should you do in order to go back to that situation if, if it's possible in your dreamings or in reality? And also, last question, you were sometimes uh, in great finals, but unfortunately, because uh, you, you didn't win them. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Roland Garros, uh, US Open here. Uh, what is missing, in your opinion? What, 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 what uh, you would like to have more? Apart from winning, yeah. Uh, obviously, we cannot go back in, in back in time. But uh, one year and a half ago, I was uh, like you said, I was uh, maybe not a few points, but quite close to winning. Uh, or I played at least the final in the U.S. Open and was fairly close. I mean, to become world number one, like you said, and um, that year was for me was fantastic. Um, and 2023 was a bit of a disappointment compared to 2022. But coming into 2023, I was prepared for, you know, it's going to be a really tough year because I have a lot of results to try to defend. And hopefully you always want to do better, but it's not always easy. Um, and this year I'm feeling like I'm a little bit more back on track. I play a little bit more loose, uh, not, not too much to lose anymore. I have achieved... Um, Sometimes when I think about it, more things that I thought was possible in my career. But by doing that, you also want to chase and push for even more. So obviously, a Grand Slam or a ATP 1000 is the next you know, big dream, big goal of mine. And today, I was able to play final of a 1000. I wasn't able to win. So I will continue to chase and uh, try to improve my game always. I've taken a few small steps, I think, in the right direction the last six months. Tennis, tennis wise, physically also, and uh, I think we are we are doing something right, and hopefully can continue on this uh, positive trend that I'm in. Hi, Stephanos. How much did you need a week like this week? A lot. I did need a week like this a lot, uh, especially the rough months that I've been through the last uh, um, half of 2023 until now. It hasn't been the best of times in terms of where I wanted to be. So getting back here and working with the title is uh, something that I was definitely not aiming for. Uh, and it came naturally. Winning this tournament three times is something I would have never imagined. Even when I first got it the first time, I obviously thought it was a great feeling. And that place is special um, towards me. But uh, getting the Holy Trinity, as I call it, is uh, something that I will uh, fully uh, cherish it and uh, 
uh, take the most out of this moment. Do, do, you, do you feel you're, sorry, you're the same player as the first two times you won here in terms of the tennis you develop in court? If I have to compare my level of tennis uh, with the last two times that I've won here, I would probably say this time has been uh, the best that I've come up with some incredible tennis. Um, and I say that because, well, you can easily say, Steph, you won the first time here without dropping a set. Wouldn't that be the, f the best performance that you have had in Monte Carlo? I would tell you not exactly. Uh, I had a, an opponent in the semifinal that is a world-class tennis player right now who refuses to lose to anyone and he's been on a very good streak so overcoming that obstacle it's definitely a sign that my tennis is progressing and I'm able to push those players and uh, topping it off uh, the win today with uh, um, um, with uh, prevailing and coming victorious uh, towards the end against Kasper, who is a very good uh, clay court player. He has shown that by playing multiple uh, Roland Garros finals. is uh, definitely a sign that I'm, I'm there and the consistency is showing. And I definitely am capable of big things. I just need to keep an open mind and keep improving because if you don't improve, uh, things tend to uh, fluctuate and uh, not quite uh, uh, go towards the same path that I'm be building towards. I saw a few things today I feel like I can improve on. And, uh, you know, I usually say that perhaps after losses, but uh, even after wins, there's plenty to learn from. And uh, what I can take from that is uh, there are a few bits and pieces that I can add to my game that can help me even better. Congratulations. Uh, and uh, uh, did you find today much easier than yesterday in a way? Because the first set you dominate, especially the second, you had five break points. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that it was an easy match today. The first set might have shown that it was easy, but in my mind, I knew, I knew that I, there was a battle there. I just, perhaps when the set finished, I was like, okay, the score is different to what I feel on court. It was 6-1, which is a good set for me. But at the same time, I knew that this opponent is not going to play uh, any worse than he did in the first set. Or it's not easy as well to maintain my level at that level that I uh, maintained it in the first set. So I have to be careful. I have to be uh, going through the emotions and, and the tactical changes that my opponent might uh, impose. So there's a lot of things that to be careful of and not to overdo certain things. These kind of situations can be tricky. You start a first set, you're feeling amazing. But then, of course, opponents adjust. Op opponents want to try something different. And because, you know, tennis players, we, we, especially top uh, class tennis players, um, you know, we have uh, a mental state that uh, we try to and adapt to things. Uh, things can very fast change, so you have to be careful and to maintain um, uh, an open-mindedness into adjusting and trying new things again. Uh, before this tournament, some people was doubting about uh, the quality of tennis of senior on clay because he had lost last year second round in Altmaier in Roland Garros. He had lost that round in Rome. So everybody was thinking, oh, he's great on, on, on hard surface, on indoor, but on clay. I'd like to know what is your feeling about how the way that senior plays on clay now? Is he capable, in your opinion, to win Rome or Roland Garros, or is very difficult? He is a very good tennis player in all surfaces. I think he has the game to play everywhere well. The last time that we played, that was here, I see his level in a much different level than the last times that we've, I think I played him in Rome, and Maybe. twice in Rome, actually, yeah. on clay. Uh, I wouldn't count the hard courts because these are different, but I'm only comparing against a particular surface. So uh, since the last two times that we played each other in those uh, instances, he's a much play uh, better player now than he was back then. And I saw it the other day. He was pushing me to my limits, and I had to reach a level of physicality that I haven't felt myself before in a long time. So it was very 
small margins that played an important role in uh, the development of that match. And I do believe he's one of the favorites dur during the entire clay court swing. Two more, one here and there. Stefanos, uh, how curious are you to, to see the comeback of Rafa Nadal on, on Tuesday in Barcelona? Do you think it's good for the, for the tour or it's a difficult rival for the French? You can take Rafa the first round. Well, I would say that Rafa, regardless of whether he hasn't played at all or if that's his, that's his first tournament, we all know what Rafa is capable of and where he can, uh, uh, how quickly he can adjust to one of his favorite surfaces, which is the clay court. I would not be surprised if we saw Rafa uh, be in the finals of Barcelona because that is something that he has done over and over again for years and years. Um, what he does have is this competitiveness and this uh, fierce tennis when he gets into the momentum that uh, sometimes feels like, um, on the outside perspective, like unstoppable. Uh, on court, uh, things feel different because you get the feeling of his ball. When you're watching, you just get a sensation of just a visual sensation. But I have all six sensations uh, enabled and activated when I have to face him. I think he's the ultimate challenge on clay. Uh, whether uh, he's playing now at, uh, let's say, uh, later stages of his career or uh, the, the ones before, I think what he has now that he didn't before is experience. And he for sure knows ways, well, to win points and uh, to prevail in, uh, in a more economy mode than he was before. Last one here. Hi, Stefanos. Congratulations for this week. You have many goals on clay and uh, your level is already very high. Three days ago, um, Maria Sakari said that her dream was to play Oli um, the Olympic, game, Olympic Games with you in the double, and that maybe you not you don't have the same dream than her. That sh we have to ask you. So, do you know already what you want to do on the Olympic Games? What I want to do is clear. If I manage to get in the Olympic Games with my brother Petros, I would want to play singles and doubles with him. I would uh, say that playing three events in a single tournament is a bit too much for me physically, taxing, and I would want to avoid that. I know it's the Olympics and it's a great opportunity to play with Maria and I completely agree she's one of the best partners to have in the mixed doubles field. Uh, I've had great moments with her, uh, but at the same time I have a dream with my brother that I would like to share and be one of the very few brothers that have ever played to, uh, together in the Olympics, especially in tennis. And nothing is stronger than that dream, and I really want to make this uh, possible for the both of us. It's family, and combining it with such a large um, uh, event that has uh, that dates back to ancient Greece, for us, it's bigger than anything else.